Hey guys, what is- is that a spider? Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God Beginner's Guide video. Got a simple one for you today, but one that will hopefully help new players streamline their dungeon farming process. Because dungeon farming is a big part of Realm of the Mad God. You're spending most of your overall gameplay in a dungeon. It's where you get your potions and high-level items. So players who are fresh to Realm of the Mad God may not fully understand what dungeons do what, which ones are worth it, which ones should be skipped over, which ones they're not ready for yet and that they need to come back to later because of their profit, and an overall summation of the dungeons that you should do and that you should not do. Let's go down the line. All the way at the beginner's tier, we have the Pirate Cave, Forest Maze, and Spider Den, all of which are great tutorial dungeons for new players who just want to learn the mechanics of dungeons and get their bearings, but after a couple of times, you don't need to touch these. They don't have any noteworthy items or potions of any kind that you can get your hands on. About a step above them, we have the Hive and Forbidden Jungle, both of which are still easy, just a little more difficult, and while I really like these dungeons in concept, they also don't drop anything worthwhile. Forbidden Jungle does have a decent neck set if you're starting out, so it's not something you necessarily have to avoid. If you see one, they're so quick and harmless that you're not really gonna lose anything by doing it, but you also aren't going to gain much. Same with the Hive. It can drop a dexterity and some fairly decent UT items, but the chances of that happening are so small, you'd be better off spending your time elsewhere. The Godlands is where you're going to be spending most of your time farming, because that's where most of the dungeons take place. Towards the lower end of the mid-tier, we have Sprite Worlds, Snake Pits, and Undead Lairs. Sprite Worlds, to me, are the universal starting point. They're very common, not that difficult for a new player, and if you level up a trickster, you can easily teleport across the platforms to get to the boss really quickly and farm these fast. It drops a guaranteed dexterity potion, and by maxing your character's dex right off the bat, while I don't think it's the most important stat, it does give you a significant boost when competing for loot with other players. It even has a chance of dropping a defense potion, so theoretically, if you wanted to max defense without resorting to higher level dungeons, you could just farm sprite worlds until you get lucky. You can even trade some of that dexterity for a defense potion. You can check out the current offers on Realmai, go into a popular server and try and trade with people. It's a very probable alternative, but when it comes to dungeon farming specifically, sprite worlds are the perfect starting point. Alongside that, you will also see a lot of snake pits. In addition to dropping from all of the lowlands critters that used to drop them, medusas now drop them as well, making this the second most common dungeon that I see. What's great about the snake pit is that it's roughly the same difficulty as the sprite world, almost as common, not quite, and it yields a speed potion, which in in my opinion is the second most useful stat out there next to defense, because with higher speed it increases the pace of the game and allows you to complete things quicker, and also allows you to more efficiently dodge projectiles, increasing your survivability. Also, unlike the sprite world, the snake pit has a chance to have a tea room, a treasure room, which has a mini boss in it that also drops a speed, and there can be upwards of three of these in a given dungeon if you're lucky, meaning a potential four speed for you to drink or accumulate and sell for defense. Really solid beginner's dungeon that you're gonna see yourself farming really until the end of time. Then we have the Undead Lair, arguably your primary source of wisdom. It is a little more challenging than the Sprite World and Snake Pit. The enemies are a little more aggressive, they're faster, do more damage, and Septavius is a rather threatening boss compared to the previous two. However, I don't find myself doing Undead Lairs as much as Sprite Worlds and Snake Pits because there are a few alternatives to acquiring wisdom, one of which is the Haunted Cemetery, a dungeon with four bosses capable of yielding speed, wisdom, a vitality at the very end, and a handful of mid to high tier items. If you want to pop a clover and a loot drop and loot tier potion beforehand, I would highly recommend doing so. But be warned, I've noticed that if I bring a slightly lower DPS character, even when maxed, if competing with other higher DPS classes like warriors, knights, etc., I end up getting zero or a purple bag if I'm lucky a lot of the time. And it can make doing cemeteries feel kind of pointless, so if you find a headless horseman in the realm and it drops a cemetery, I'd recommend keeping it to yourself. Now, if it's your first attempt at doing a cemetery, I I wouldn't really recommend doing this completely alone, because there are a few beginner's traps, a boss that requires a certain amount of DPS in order to be completed, which you may or may not have, and the final boss, which can be rather scary. I do have guides on most of these dungeons that you can check out if you need some extra help. I don't have a video on all of them yet, mind you, but a good chunk of them. Haunted Cemetery, I think, is a dungeon best enjoyed with three, four, maybe five people of your same caliber. If you're in a guild or have a group of friends, this is ideal. But every time I say that in one of my videos, I get people replying to me saying, I don't have any friends that play Realm of the Mad God. I'm in this alone. What do I do? This is... 
I feel like I'm at a disadvantage, and I get it. But let me tell you, we live in an age where Rotmeg Discord servers are a thing. Even if you join the Realm Reddit Discord, there are people in farming calls on the daily. You can meet new people and talk to them very easily. We have the technology for it, and I, you gotta use it. So, Cemetery, it's a great dungeon both item and potion wise, but if there's too many people who outclass you in it, you should skip over it. There are two miscellaneous dungeons, the Candyland Hunting Grounds and the Cave of a Thousand Treasures. Neither of which are inherently difficult, mind you. They do have some hard-hitting enemies and some tricky patterns here and there, but a competent player can very easily get their bearings after a couple of playthroughs. Cave of a Thousand Treasures is a really unique dungeon, I love its design, and various treasure chest mimic enemies, including the boss, have a chance of dropping one of four potions. These aren't guaranteed even if soloing, but considering how rare the cave is, if you see one, you shouldn't pass it up. Same thing goes for the Candyland Hunting Grounds. I don't see these very often, maybe one per realm if I'm lucky, and because the dungeon technically has infinitely spawning bosses as long as you clear, you can spend hours in there grinding potions assuming you don't disconnect. But the problem with the RNG drops in this game is that while the Candyland does yield quote-unquote infinite loot, you can also get infinite nothing. It's really a mixed bag. But again, the rarity of these two dungeons warrants you to try them at least once. They can be very good. Now we move on to defense, which as I said, I believe to be the most important stat in the game. New players are playing through what is essentially the hard mode of Realm of the Mad God. Not having any defense, enemies do crazy damage you have to play way more cautiously. When you have max defense and good armor, it's normal difficulty. It's a reasonable amount of damage that you can manage. When you get a divine pet, it's easy mode. The Toxic Sewers is the only dungeon that drops a defense guaranteed as its main drop. However, this is much more difficult than the likes of the Snake Pit or Undead Lair. It's long, the sewer water sickens you, preventing you from regaining any health, and there are a lot of enemies that can drain your health very quickly. The Abyss of Demons is a very common alternative, because while it is the same difficulty, it can be somewhat faster. It really depends how many dead ends you run into. But the boss used to drop a defense and vitality, making the Abyss one of the most highly sought after dungeons because of its two for one profit. Now Decca has reverted it back to its original state somewhat, where it only drops a guaranteed vitality. However, like the sprite world, it has a chance of dropping defense, only it feels a bit higher. I'd say about one in every four Abysses I could get a defense. Sometimes I only get defense, which is weird. And any treasure rooms that you find also drop a defense, only there it's actually guaranteed. So even though these aren't the quote-unquote main source of defense anymore, I still find myself acquiring a lot of them from the abyss. But there is what I consider to be an overlooked major source of defense the Mad Lab. Mad Labs are roughly the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than a Toxic Sewers, only they don't take nearly as much time to complete because there's no sewer water slowing you down or making you sick. In fact, most of the enemies in the dungeon are pretty unthreatening in terms of their speed. They have high damage outputs, and there is some confusion, but they can be ignored fairly easily. Killing the main boss, Dr. Terrible, will always give you a wisdom, but by clearing all of the Tesla coils, you can activate the hidden second boss, which, when getting full soulbound, will always give you a defense potion, maybe even a bonus wisdom. Not to mention the UT Sorcerer set is incredibly good. There is a little bit of finesse required to do this second boss, and clearing all of the Tesla coils does take some time. But if you're in kind of a small realm and you call out Mad Lab and main chat and just get a couple of people to teleport to you, I'm sure that you can clear it no problem. And I can almost guarantee you that it will take less time than clearing an abyss or a sewers, and it is definitely more safe. So if you don't feel like farming sprite worlds for a chance at defense, or you don't feel ready enough to go to the sewers or the abyss, then doing Mad Labs both bosses might just be right up your alley. Next, we have Attack, which primarily drops from the Manor of Immortals and the Puppet Master's Theater. They're pretty much on par with each other in terms of difficulty. I think that the Puppet Master is a more difficult boss than Ruthven, but the Manor is a little trickier of a dungeon to clear, but with a lot of confusion and bleeding. With a little bit of practice, I think that Manors can be soloed even without max defense. It'll take a little bit of time, but I think it's definitely more possible than soloing a Theater, because the Puppet Master is kind of a tricky boss, especially with his replication phase. Like with the Mad Lab, I recommend calling it out to get a couple of people to teleport to you. Also, Manor of Immortals is a much less common dungeon. There's only, I think, a maximum of maybe four per realm, and that's if they drop. It's only a chance from the Kage Kami. But these are two of your main sources of attack. Once you have max defense, there's not really a particular order that you have to follow to do other dungeons, because that's your most basic stat. It's what dictates how well you have to play. But for anyone who doesn't have a farming character to get all of that defense, I would say stick with sprite worlds until you have max dexterity, alongside farming snake pits until you have max speed, then start going after the mad labs trying to max your wisdom and defense. If you don't want to wait until you have 25 defense and you feel like you're tanky enough, then you can start attempting sewers and abysses with few people, maybe even 
even by yourself. Once your defense is high enough, then going after the feeders and manners will be a piece of cake. And if you still have any leftover wisdom, vitality, maybe even speed, go after the cemeteries to finish the job, and you might even be able to nab some higher level gear. Now for the event dungeons that drop from specific event gods. Beach Zone is a vanity dungeon that doesn't drop any potions, and it's very rare, so don't even... It, it hardly exists. Davy Jones Locker from the Ghost Ship. This is a good dungeon. I like it. But it only drops an attack and a wisdom. Two potions that are very easily acquired from other, more common places. If you see one and there's a bunch of people going in, you can give it a shot. But it's not the most time-efficient dungeon out there. Mountain Temple from the Jade and Garnet Statues. Don't do it. It's a very difficult dungeon, it's once per realm, and it hardly drops any loot. You can skip it. Same with Lair of Draconis, unfortunately. A lot of people love this dungeon. I'm indifferent to it. I like the bosses some of them, but because all five of them drop a chest, the loot that you get is once again very fickle. The amount of times I've got zero from a chest more than outweighs the amount of times that I've got actual loot. And the actual loot that I got was a wisdom, maybe a dex, a vitality. I didn't even get the mana or life, which can drop. I got one white bag, that was cool. So yeah, unless you're after the white bags, which are inherently rare, you're not going to be doing this dungeon. The three epic dungeons, Deadwater Docks, Woodland Labyrinth, and the Crawling Depths. D Docks is harmless enough. It drops a speed and a dexterity, and there's almost always a large group of people doing these. So you have somebody rush, find the entrance, hopefully everybody TPs to him, you enter the boss room, and then you kill him very quickly and hopefully get loot. But unless you're playing under those very swift conditions, a speed and a dexterity could very easily be acquired from a sprite world or a snake pit, something that's much easier and more common to get. So you can give it a shot, but I can't promise that you'll leave satisfied. And doing this with a small, inexperienced group of people is not worth it. Woodland Labyrinth. It's once per realm, drops a vitality, and the boss is kind of a beginner's trap that can easily kill you. Skip it. The Crawling Depths is the only one of the three that I can really say is worth your time. And that's only towards the tail end of your journey because it drops a mana, which is usually the seventh or eighth stat that people max because of its rarity and expense. Same thing goes for the Ocean Trench, only I find myself getting loot from these way more than a Sea Depths. Ocean Trench is the most common form of mana, plus a really nice, somewhat common coral set. There is almost always an enormous clump of people doing these because they want to get a chance at that jug, and the Ocean Trench is a nice bonus. Because of this large group of people, I can very confidently confidently say that you shouldn't be afraid of dying when entering here. Wait for somebody to rush, TP to the boss, don't sit on her, and you should be fine. Just make sure you're getting your air. The Ice Cave is divisive. Like Draconis, it has a chance at dropping some pretty good items. You can get the high end, mana, or the low end, dexterity, as well as possibly getting some wine cellar tops. While the chance of you getting loot is a tad hit or miss, the problem lies in how the dungeon is completed. The Ice Cave requires you to clear it, and as such, unless a ton of people have gone into it and aren't leeching, it can take you a longer than comfortable amount of time for a chest that you might not even get anything from. If you see one, you don't have to be ashamed in making that decision to go in, but don't be surprised if you wind up with zero or nothing noteworthy. Now we have the Tomb of the Ancients, the most profitable dungeon in the game. It's how I max life on all my characters, it's how I used to pay for things, it's how I stay afloat in Realm of the Mad God. The Tomb of the Ancients has three bosses that can all drop life, the most valuable potion in the game, it has possible treasure sarks, that yield stat potions, and the white bag rings that you can get are very good and, in my experience, very common. I think I've had like 20 pyramid rings. However, we are getting towards the end game difficulty of our content. So Tomb of the Ancients is not a dungeon that messes around, and you can very easily die in it if you don't know what you're doing. As such, this is something you can dabble with in the beginning, but don't get serious about completing these until you're at least 4-8. The nest is even harder, in my opinion, mainly for the boss. Some of the minions can drop dex and death, and the main boss can drop a life, plus a greater decks, but you know what else drops a life potion? The tomb. Only three of them, and it's easier. Do that. Now, the Shatters is one of my favorite dungeons. I love it, I just did a guide on it, I think it's fantastic, but this dungeon was designed for experienced players to put their skills to the test, and to have a chance at getting some really good accessory items. The loot that you can get is a defense, attack, mana, and life, if you get full soulbound on all three bosses. For a guy who's only been playing for a few weeks, maybe a month or two, this dungeon shouldn't even be a consideration. It can take you a very long time to complete, it can take you a very long time to master, and there are so many other dungeons that are quicker and easier to access that yield the same, if not more, loot. In terms of time efficiency, the Shatters is not something that you need to consider. When you feel you're up to the challenge and want to give it a shot for the heck of it, 
sure. But when you get to that point, you probably don't need a beginner's guide. The same thing goes for the Lost Halls. Very difficult dungeon, has some really cool bosses and incredible UT white bag items. But it's way too long, difficult, and is really hard to get loot in. This is a dungeon made for players who are bored of the game. Now there are still a few more extra dungeons to talk about. One of the best, in my opinion, is both Oryx's Chamber and the Wine Cellar. The Stone Guardians can drop a defense, and if you clear all of the stone statues, you can go to Janus, which does drop some good potions, mind you. But you kind of have to make a choice in the moment of going to Oryx or Janus, and in all of my experience, I've always been able to get more and better loot from Oryx as opposed to Janus. Plus, if you go to 01, there's a very high likelihood that someone will have a Wine Cellar incantation to take you to Oryx 2, which also has a chance of dropping potions and Wine Cellar tops that you can put on your character or sell for life. If you defeat Janus and go to the Court of Oryx, there's a chance of getting a Lair of Shaitan or the Puppet Master's Encore. I don't really care for Shaitan, and you shouldn't either, because it's a very situational dungeon that can be quite challenging and hectic, but the loot, one attack, is just not worth it. The Puppet Master's Encore is a boss fight that I really enjoy. I think it's very structurally sound and requires a lot of concentration to be effectively overcome, but again, because of how out of the way it is, there's not really a need for it other than experience. There are some other miscellaneous dungeons like Battle for Nexus, Belladonna's Garden, the Ice Tomb. Those are so rare and infrequent, and they don't even drop anything that good, at least not consistently, that they can be safely ignored. So, as a recap, ignore the bottom and really high tier dungeons and focus on the mid tier. Sprite World, Snake Pits, Undead Lairs, Candyland Hunting Grounds, and Cave of a Thousand Treasures if they pass you by. Haunted Cemetery if the conditions are right. Abyss of Demons and Toxic Sewers if you're up for the challenge. Mad Labs as an alternative. Puppet Theater and Manor for your attack. Davies if you feel like it. Sea Depths and Ocean Trenches and maybe an Ice Cave if you're after mana and you have most of your other stats maxed. Tomb of the Ancients when you feel very confident and you're ready to make bank. Do Oryx 1 and 2 as many chances as you get. And if somebody has keys to open up a Puppet Encore and you feel up to the challenge, give it a shot. Every other dungeon for a beginner player who is desperate to max can be avoided. That's how I see it anyway. I hope this was able to guide new players in the right direction and help them streamline their dungeon farming process, maybe cut some corners, save them time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright, see ya.